So I wanted to go over an example that we can um, look and see how the display function, read matrix function, and all that fun stuff um, shows up. So here I have, first thing in this file, I am reading data in from a file. So reading data. This file is saved in my command, in my current folder. It's in the same folder as my script. With my script file. And what this does is it takes all of this data in this file, this .csv file, and loads it into the variable called data. So in my workspace, I'm gonna have data that shows up and it's gonna contain all of my numbers. This data is gonna have four columns because I know that's what's in my file. And then I'm gonna go ahead and break up the data into columns. So the first column is gonna store the years, the second store, uh, column is gonna store the CO2 emissions um, for all of my vehicles. The third column stores the CO2 emissions for the Ford vehicle. And then my last column contains the CO2 emissions for Toyota. So you can see this syntax that we learned about in week three. It grabs all the rows in data for the fourth column. So I'm isolating the data into four different variables corresponding to each column. Then I'm gonna go ahead and print it out. So here we can see the display function used twice and an fprintf function. Display, I don't have a lot of control over. It's gonna print out this text. It's gonna print out the word total emissions for Ford, space equals space, and then it's gonna take this number and convert it to a string scalar. So we can see here, this through this is my one piece of data that's being printed out by the display function. It's this text, total emissions for Ford, added with the sum of Ford, which is converted to um, a string scalar. For my second display, it's gonna print out this scalar array, or string array. It's gonna take total emissions for, for Toyota equals space, and then put next to it, the sum of all the Toyota converted to a string. So here, these brackets indicate that I'm printing out one piece of data. I'm printing out one text, one string array that contains total emissions for Ford, next to whatever the sum of the toilet is converted to a string. And then if I want to do it with fprintf, I'm going to print out total emissions for all equals. Here I'm going to insert data. What data is that going to be? It's going to insert this data here. It's going to print it out with four digits past the decimal point. That's what the dot four means. Four digits past the decimal point, And this f indicates This F indicates that it's gonna print it out as a floating point number, or it's gonna print out those digits past the decimal point. And then here, it's gonna press enter twice. Press enter twice. So all this is gonna print out three different lines. One, that gives me the total emissions for Ford. Two, that gives me the total emissions for Toyota. And three, that gives me the total emissions for all. All three of those followed by the number that comes from my data. And then here I'm gonna print out a table. And I'm gonna print out my data in a table. It's gonna print out the emissions for the last 10 years. So here you can see disp emissions for the last 10 years. It's gonna print out a single string. Here it's followed by a new line. So one thing to note between disp and fprintf, with fprintf, it's not automatically gonna follow with a new line. That's why we have these backslash ends there. Disp always implicitly follows a new line. So just something to keep in mind. 
Then I have another display function that's going to print out a bunch of spaces, then the year, a bunch of spaces, all, a bunch of year, spaces, forward, a bunch of spaces, Toyota. And essentially what I'm doing here is I'm printing out a header for my data, for my table. And then I'm going to print out my data. So disp, I'm printing out the data stored in this variable. I'm going to print out the data in the last, uh, well, I'm printing it out twice, in the last five rows, all the columns. Uh, it's the last 10 to uh, um, six rows. Because in this line, I'm going to print out the last five rows. So here you can see the difference between how to print out a table of data using disk versus fprintf. If we want to print out a table with disk, we just literally print out the matrix. So it's going to display this data as a table the way we see it as a matrix. With fprintf, it's a little bit different. With fprintf, it's going to print out this data. One value at a time. In this format. So the first number it prints out is right here. It's going to print it out with a width of 13 as an integer. The second number is going to print out is right here. It's going to print it with a width of 13, two digits past the decimal point as a floating point number. Here it's going to print out width of 13, two digits past the decimal point, a floating point number. Same thing, width of 13, two digits past the decimal point, a floating point number. So it's going to take one number at a time out of this array and insert it here, the first number, the second number, third number, fourth number, then insert a new line and then it's going to keep going fifth number sixth number seventh number eighth number new line tenth number eleventh number twelfth number thirteenth number new line and again this one it's going to keep going until all the data is printed out one thing to note when we use disk it's going to be it as we see it in the matrix as we see it. For fprintf, it's going to print out the data going down a column. So here's number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this number first is printed out there, then this number printed out, then this number printed out. You can see it's a little messy now. But what this means is we need to go ahead and transpose our matrix. to make sure that the, um, that the columns are printed out for each number one at a time. So we're gonna transpose our matrix. So disk, it's just printed out as we see it, F print F, we wanna transpose it. So if we see what that actually looks like, here's my code. So I run it line by line. I'm gonna read in the data. So I can see, here's my workspace, here it's called data. If I open it up, I can see the data that was in the um, file. Then I'm gonna break it up into different columns. Step, step, step. Here I'm gonna display this one here. It's printing out the total emissions for Ford, and it's converting the sum to a string scalar to print it out. So here you can see the data that's printed out. I don't have any control over this. It automatically prints out four digits past the decimal point. I step again. I'm gonna print out this string array. So it prints out total emissions for Toyota and then inserts the data because I use the number to string. And then I print out F print F. So total emissions for all, insert this data with four digits past the decimal point. And I could change that if I wanted to. Here I cannot, here I can because I used F print F. And notice I have two new lines. So it prints out a new line here, goes to the next line, and then prints out a new line here, goes to the next line. 
Then I display the emissions for the last 10 years, display the, um, the header for my uh, table. Here I just displayed this data. So I highlight it and evaluate that section. This is what it looks like in my workspace. So it prints that out explicitly, just slaps it on there, exactly the way it is in my workspace. If I print out this, you can see it's a transposed version of my columns. So here's the year, then emissions, emissions, emissions. Here, transpose, it's the year, then emissions, emissions, emissions. And the reason why I want that is because when I print out my data, Notice it grabs this number, inserts it as an integer here. Grabs the, this number, inserts it in my next slot as a floating point number, two digits past the decimal point here. Then grabs this number, inserts it next, grabs this number, inserts it next, so we can see it, it inserts it transposed. So if I clear this, run my entire code, oops. I can see here's my printed out, here's my table. There's that space there because display, disp, automatically enters in a new line. And we can see how this works all together, all these different things that we learned about in this uh, week material.